Open Source versus Proprietary Software, Part 2, Support. Support is a major factor when you're determining whether or not you should run an open source solution or a proprietary software solution. Open source software is often not supported to the degree that proprietary software is, and there's not a phone number you can just call to get resolution. So I thought I'd tell you two very similar stories about issues that I've had, one with proprietary software and one with open source software. When WordPress patched WordPress 2.5 in order to fix some attacks that were possible against it that allowed people using the comment system to inject code into your WordPress site that could then corrupt it, they not only fixed that bug, but they fixed a number of other things that were probably more best practices than actual bugs. One of which was the encoding format that they used when talking to the database. As a result, if you had done some things where you had injected special characters into your posts, they went from, not, from working correctly to not working anymore or displaying random weird characters. This applied to some of the double quotes and to things like the copyright mark and the trademark mark in your posts. Now, you couldn't not deploy this new fix because you needed it in order to keep your system secure. But there wasn't anybody you could call to say, hey guys, what'd you change? All of my posts now have these weird characters in them. How do I fix this? So that was a major problem for us that was running you know, 50 or 60 websites that all had this code and now all of a sudden had these weird characters throughout them. We were almost happier with the broken code where people could attack us because at least we could detect that and we had come up with our own patch to fix it of saying, hey, we, we made these files CH modded so that you can't overwrite them and that fixed the problem. It wasn't a good fix, it wasn't a long-term fix, it broke some, you know, the upgrade path. We had to undo those things in order to make it so WordPress could upgrade itself. But it made it so that the problem went away. But there was nothing we could do where we could contact WordPress. There wasn't a number we could call and say, hey WordPress, you broke our website, what are we going to do? <clears throat> On the other hand, when Microsoft released a couple of updates to Windows Media Server, they made a small change that made the XML compliance of playlists on the server side more strict. And really what happened was they changed it so that a couple of spots were case specific, were case sensitive, case specific, whichever way you want to say it. And that timecode that used to support a drop frame mode no longer supported that mode. As a result, we had about 40,000 files that were going to need to be fixed, but we didn't know what was broken and there wasn't any good way to tell where things were broken. All of a sudden, we just had these files and they didn't work anymore. So we called Microsoft and literally, you know, through our MSDN, we have support tickets, we call them up, you, you get played some on hold music, they talk to you, they say, hey, which product do you need support with? And you say, Windows Media Server. And they say, yeah, we don't have somebody just on the phone that supports that. What is your problem? We'll hook you up with somebody. And it took two and a half days and we talked with literally the program managers at Microsoft about how to fix the problem and sent them the files and said, here are our files. We know they worked on this version. We know they don't work on this version. What gives? And Microsoft told us what was broken so that we could fix it, but also released a patch that fixed the support issue. And because they wanted to move people to a more stringent code compliance, they made the patch optional. So you could install the patch in order to fix your stuff if you had broken files, but the recommended solution was to actually fix your broken files in the right way. Well, once we knew what was broken, 
what we opted to do was apply the patch, then fix the files, and then apply the non-patched version afterwards so that we were running the same code that everybody else was and wouldn't have inherited any new problems. In this scenario, we found resolution to both problems. But with the WordPress problem, we didn't get any support. And we were smart people, so we figured it out. But a lot of people would have been dead in the water. You would have said, hey, my website's broken. My only fix is to roll back to what I was using. So in both cases, we were OK with either. And we solved our problems. But if you had been an average user, or you had been the IT guy at a, a company and were having to support these issues, you might not have been able to come up with the fix for WordPress. But the phone number to call Microsoft would have been there and you know it is a paid support I think it cost us hundred and fifty dollars and we got something like 12 hours of support and that just doesn't come with open source software there are some support packages for open source software that's what Red Hat is in the business of doing but you have to take that with the approach of they are going to try and fix your code not necessarily they are the ones who wrote every line of it. They have a complete understanding of it. They will find a resolution for you.